Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about dynamic programming and how it can help us reduce our runtimes. Uh, specifically, we're going to be building off the example from the previous video in the CS Concepts playlist, which was talking about iterative versus recursive programming. So again, let's start with our Fibonacci example. Uh, first, let's actually define what it means to be dynamic. Dynamic is just storing solutions instead of rerunning the program. So if you think about this in Fibonacci, we do Fibonacci of x minus 1, which is going to call Fibonacci and run Fibonacci of x minus 1 again, right? Which is the same thing as running Fibonacci of x minus 2 originally. So if we store our solution, we could save a lot of our time. We cut our time in more than half. So to do this, let's just go ahead and define a function. Let's just call it fibd for dynamic. All right. So uh, we know we want to store our solutions, which is exactly what dictionaries are for. So let's say, let's make a dictionary, a global dictionary. Remember equals dictionary. We'll, we'll want to fill in values there later, but I can, let's go ahead and see what we need to put to start with. So if x in remembered, meaning we already in remember, meaning we already ran our Fibonacci function for that value, we can just return it. Otherwise, let's actually assign our dictionary value is equal to fib d of x minus 2 plus fib d of x minus 1. So this is just the recursive part. Return remember x. But obviously we need our base case here. We need our 1, 1, and our 2, 1, which is just saying that when we want to call Fibonacci of 1 or 2, we just return 1 and 1. Um, there we go. That should be good. We can test that out. Let's do 50 of 5. Good. 10. Cool. Uh, let's go up. So clearly, that seems to be working. Uh, and now let's come up with a way to compare the time efficiency of our plain recursive function and our dynamic function. So to do this, this is where we bring in the time and sys modules that we imported. Let's make this a very platform agnostic func function and or script, and let's define a dictionary of our function. So we can say funcs is equal to fib and fibd. So again, not having parentheses is essentially putting the function object in a list. It's not running the function. Now, uh, let's go ahead and make a dictionary to store our times. Let's just say dictionary of our function will equal zero. So that's how much time they take. We'll just set them all to zero. And then we can try to use our, uh, con our script input to run our function instead of having to use Python 3-i for interactive. So we can just do num is equal to int sys.rv1, which will just let us type it in as type in the number we want to run as a argument when we run Python 3. Then we can do how many times do we want to run our program? Let's just say times equal to 10. And now we can just do four in range times, right? So for, so we're going to do it 10 times for fun in funks. Let's do start is equal to time dot time. Answer is equal to fun of funk of 
num, which is the argument that we took in. Now let's say dictionary, uh, which will store our times of fun of a of sorry of func is equal to or plus equals, which is basically adding. So what we're doing here is we are adding how much time this function took to run one time to our dictionary of times for that function. Then uh, we can say that that's it because now we're running our program 10 times in this case, or number of times, and we're calling each function for, for each of that 10 times. So every function will be run 10 times. And lastly, we can just say for t in so in this case, we can all we're doing here is on average. And now that, that looks about right. We can just do Python three dynamic dot py. And now let's try 10. So clearly, it looks like at a number of 10, our Fibonacci dynamic function was a lot faster in order of magnitude, right? 10 to the negative 6 versus 10 to the negative 5. Again, this is on average, so not the sum of the times. And then let's say we want to go for a bigger number. Let's say we want to do uh, 100. I don't even know if it'll make it here for our non-dynamic version. Yeah, so clearly that's not going to work. Let's go with something smaller. 20. So if we look at our recursive function, it's 0 0.003 seconds, which is not bad, but if you compare that to our dynamic function, it's much, much slower. Right? It's four orders of magnitude slower. Because we see that we can get 8.4 times 10 to the negative 6 on average with our dynamic function. Let's go for maybe 30. Yeah, so in this case, 0.3 seconds versus 6 times 10 to the negative 6. And as you can tell, again, Fibonacci dynamic is much, much faster. And that's it for this CoolCube video. I'll see you guys in the next.